Hello, it's Plaguefog Harbor here with a new episode of RBY Bites. It's July, and that means Stadium OU is now available as a ladder on Pokemon Showdown for a month. A once decrepit simulator riddled with bugs, improvements have been made which make it a much more viable format to play. In fact, it even has its own viability rankings and tier list now. So I'll be dedicating this video to documenting what to expect from the format. Let's go over the major changes to the mechanics first. Pokemon Stadium is sort of a line between Generations 1 and 2 in this regard. I won't be explaining Gen 1's mechanics here, just stadiums. You can find detailed information on both of these in the description. So it's mainly bug fixes. Because Stadium is played on a single cartridge, these things are removed in their entirety, removing one of the biggest tearing nightmares ever. So now you no longer have Pokemon games gradually moving away from each other because Psywave just happens to deal zero damage or something. In the event of a 10256 miss, the game will roll it again. This only happens once though, so you can still miss it of 1 in 65,535 chance, if that matters to you. <laughs> Dig and Fly no longer calls the user to become invulnerable if the moves are interrupted, so that means that means moves can't be unbanned and used to compete at play. Recover and Soft World will no longer fail if the user has HP that's 255 and 500 level lower than it should be, so you no longer have those random failures that you may have experienced on the Gen 1 at ladder. Focus Energy is also fixed! Jolchon's critical hit rate is now 74% if it uses it. Very, very interesting change. Many stat related mechanics are also fixed. Boosted stats no longer ignore stat drops from Burn Paralysis. Stat drops from Burn Paralysis are now removed via stats removed from moves like Rest and Haze as well. And they can also no longer be reapplied by the opponent using a stat boosting move. So, really, uh, Burn and Paralysis kind of just work normally now. And finally, Stats drops involving stats equal to or above 1023 will no longer result in them rolling over into very low numbers. So, for example, if you're playing Ubers, uh, Mewtwo will no longer just randomly get killed by a Psychic. <laughs> However, many balancing changes were also made. Team preview now exists, allowing players to pick their leads and evaluate their game plan for the opposing team. This makes things like a surprise late game Zapdos much less impactful. So now you can play around it across the game, rather than just being taken off guard. Critical hits occur more frequently with Pokemon with base speed equal to or lower than 75, but less for Pokemon with more. Plus, it is now rounded down, meaning the cap is down 99%. For example, while Electro's critical hit rate is now 21%, Snorlax's is now 10%, so Snorlax can actually land a critical hit twice as often. Rest also counts on Sleep Clause in Stadium, allowing a user to block Sleep. And Sleep itself, the status, now lasts 0 to 3 turns, making profiting from it sort of a coin flip, people don't really like using it in this game. Hyper Beam now forces a recharge whenever it's used, even if it misses. However, recoil moves now don't deal damage to the user if they KO an opponent, meaning double edge or submission are now somewhat viable replacements. Substitute now blocks status like in modern generations, making it a much more relevant move towards for a lot of Pokemon. This is arguably the most controversial balancing change. Many people want this move banned, but personally I think it's alright, there's a lot of cards way to it. Using Explosion against the Substitute now KOs the user, as it should. If you switch out a partial trapping move, the opposing user will have their turn cut off, making it far less abusable. And finally, Haze now cures the user status as well as the opponents for some reason, I don't know why it's like that, but yeah, it's a thing. While not an exhaustive list of changes, these ones result in a much more familiar game for newer players, making it an interesting game to get started when getting into RBY, if you wanted some sort of like gradual shift. However, it is also quite different from your run of the mill RBY overuse as well. The biggest change, by far, is Sleep's viability, which also causes a cascade of other changes. As mentioned before, Sleep is no longer essentially an Oko, with the Sleep turns being between 0 and 3. So you have a 50 50 shot of the Pokemon staying asleep as you bring in a Switch in rather than the potential of being able to switch in Pokemon in and threaten a whole KO. Combined with Apex Predator Snorlax being a frequent rest user, thus disabling sleep entirely once it goes under and switches out, sleep's viability is largely reserved to specific teams. Thus, it's rare to see Pokemon like Sing Chansey, Hypnosis Gengar, or even Sleep Powder Executor in a stadium environment. Instead, they pick more consistent options, such as paralysis inducing moves, Substitute, or something else entirely. Jinx is also pretty much useless as well, which I think we can all agree is a brilliant change. Now with this change, you would think Executor is significantly worse off. However, the current metagame shifts have shockingly been in its favour. Executor employs the obscure Rest Egg set from regular overuse, involving Psychic, Stun Spore, Rest, and either Double Edge or Explosion. The, def the defensive set gives the player significantly more mileage out of it, and in a metagame geared towards the style of play, 
I think the player's just kind of alive for it. As mentioned before, Substitute is a very controversial change, allowing any Pokemon to block Paralysis if they're faster. This notably benefits Persian, Rhydon, and Chansey. Persian can protect itself from its greatest weakness and score free hits, Rhydon can set up a Paralyzed Executor that can paralyze itself, and Chansey gets humongous substitutes and can swipe hits from Pokemon like Alakazam. Speaking of Alakazam, many players have tried using it in a Move Substitute, but this often misses the point. Alakazam's attacking power points go down significantly, making it effortlessly power points stalled, while Starby often has to lose its coverage. They could drop Thunder Wave and serve their coverage, but they end up being much worse against Pokemon like Tauros in this case. Given moves like Double Edge can break some students without sustaining recoil, there's also a bit of additional counterplay. However, the changes to the move definitely is still Culture Shock and Neil initiated. Focus Energy's buffs certainly get a player's neurons firing, wanting to be the first to find a broken user. Unfortunately, its inherent inconsistencies often make it a fool's errand. Jolteon is the most noticeable user, boasting a 71% critical hit rate when using it, firing off some seriously foul Thunderbolts. Unicake is about the best you get with other users, being capable of using its sublime coverage alongside other critical hits to finally deal some desirable damage, but the bevy of weaknesses make this difficult to justify. So really, you can sometimes have a Pokemon set up and then just kind of do nothing, which it really is a bad taste in your mouth when that happens. Hyper Beam's nerf has a substantial impact on the metagame. Hyper Beam's power enabled Taurus to stampede the tier, with Pokemon like Chansey and Starby actively recovering out of KO range for it. This allows to be a game ender of souls, cleaning out all the mess. With Hyper Beam effectively gone, it has to make do with either Double Edge's lesser power, or moves like Thunderbolt or Stomp to expand its matchups. It's still a surprisingly powerful Pokemon despite this though, with its critical hit rate remaining very high. So, it just kind of has to change its strategies just a little bit, but it remains a very viable pick in the meta game. The changes to how stat drops from Paralysis and Burner handled particularly impacts Slowbro. In regular overuse, Slowbro can switch in, trade Paralysis, and then use Amnesia to become faster than the opposing Pokemon. It can't really do this without extreme risk anymore, as by not becoming faster, it's much easier to pressure. It can get rid of paralysis of rest, but it's still a very impactful change for it, really. This also affects Psychic, a move which has a 33.2% special drop in Army Y, which can make interactions between Alakazam, Starby, and Chansey quite swingy. With this gone, these interactions are now much more consistent, but also a bit less fun in my opinion. The changes to moves like Wrap make Cloyster and Dragonite significantly worse, essentially making a connected partial trapping move into a forced switch for both users. While this does create integrating mix-up situations, it also makes the moves a lot worse, only really being used to get out of bad matchups. Agility Wrap is still possible though, just being slower and less reliable, so if you want your Agility Plus Wrap Dragonite, well yeah, you can have it. <laughs> Team Preview shakes up things quite a bit. Many team styles, particularly those involving a legendary bird, often have a very precise game plan that utilizes surprise. While a super clued in player can figure out what's, what's up based on certain actions like the opponent takes, Steam Preview makes it seem easier than ever to deduce a strategy. This particularly helps Golden, in my opinion, which has trouble succeeding in regular overuse due to sometimes exploding too early to check Zapdos. With it now revealed at the start, this makes decision making much easier for the Golden player. This also makes it easy to see what someone's lead may be, allowing teams to featuring both Starby and Alakazam to choose the best Pokemon for the job, among other things. Overall, Stadium OU is a rather unappreciated metagame in RBY, and hopefully this brief overview gives you some inspiration for your, for your forays into the ladder. Why don't you join the RBY Discord and arrange some games with the experts?